So at this point, what we're going to do is go ahead and kick off the routing process for static routing. When I go into my global configuration mode and I try to go ahead and turn on IP routing by typing in the command IP routing, there is no display that comes back. It's just now been enabled so that this router will have the capability of routing. Now that does not change what's in the routing table. You'll notice that if I execute the show IP route command again, I still have exactly the same information in my table. This has not changed anything. So what I want to do now is create a single static route to network number 3, which will go through my 2800A router. Now, when I go back into the global configuration mode, I will use the IP route command to add the static route. Next, I'll put in the destination network ID, which is 172.16.3.0, with the 24-bit mask. Now, I need to add the gateway address that is going to be used to get there, for example, 172.16.2.2, which is the 2800 router. Now, I will know which direction to send the information to get to network 3. Based upon this route, let's assume that 2800A knows how to get to network 3. Our diagram shows it does, hence it's a directly connected interface. So I go ahead and exit out of global configuration mode and execute a show IP route command. Note that there is an S source static route that has now been added on the network 172.16.3.0. You will notice that it currently has an admin distance of 1, and it has a metric of 0. It's not a calculated metric. That's because it's actually a static route at this point, which is in a direct hop. Now, if I ping 172.16.3.1, I will know which direction to go. I will hit the 2.2 route, which is actually my 2800B. You will notice that I've got a 100% success. Now the 2800B router has received this ICMP echo request from the 3800A router and it would say, yeah, I know exactly what network 3 is and I see where you're coming from. You're coming from network 2, 2.1 to be exact. I'll go ahead and reply to this echo and that's the reason I get the echo response back to the 100%.